Hi folks, let's build this upgraded filter system for our Haas CNC machine. Let's walk through Jay Pearson's original design as well as the changes and upgrades we made to help keep our coolant clean, help keep our machine in good condition, and help avoid any contaminants from getting in the spindle or the ways and so forth. Welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. This is the backside of our Haas VM3. If it looks different than your Haas, we've got two different things on our machine. We've got this auto coolant top off system and over here behind it, we've got the high pressure pump for the through spindle coolant. Most Haas machines nowadays will have this black pump that is for your regular uh, flood coolant. And on our machine, we've got two motors for the upgraded chip augers. We got this idea from Jay Pearson at Pearson Workholding. The problem is that his machine, I think is an older machine and perhaps a tool room mill, it doesn't have the gray canister filter that we and most late model Haas machines have. And I want to keep that canister filter. It's a little bit of a more rougher pre-filter to help get the worst of the material out before we run it through these 20 micron filters. So this is your coolant tank down here on the floor. The chute is what returns the coolant from the machine. The coolant is continuously recycled through the machine. It goes through this mesh filter. Uh, it's kind of in a fish fry type of basket. Unfortunately, I don't think Haas includes that anymore with the machine. It sits in the coolant tank until you need coolant, in which case the black pump turns on and pumps the coolant up through the blue hose into the canister filter. The bottom line goes to the coolant hose, the wash down hose. The top left that has a check valve, that's your main flood coolant line. And the one below it feeds the T-box at the top of your Y-axis that helps keep chips off the rear of the Y-axis. So let's do this the right way. Since we've got this filter, and it's kind of a crude filter again, it filters your bigger media, let's put it first before we get to that new 20 micron filter. Our gray canister filter, it actually stays pretty clean on our VM3, I think partly because of that mesh, wire mesh and cloth filter. We didn't get that on our VF2, so we just bought some cheesecloth from McMaster. We'll put a part number in the video description and that helps act uh, to keep the worst of the chips out of even the coolant tank. We're doing this project for two reasons. One is to not get chips clogging up things like your hoses or the, the T-box the, on the Y-axis, but more importantly, clean coolant lasts longer and it's gonna be much better for the long life of things like your spindle, the pumps, especially the high pressure through spindle coolant pump, and even your linear motion devices on the machine. Let clean coolant can actually help you get better parts and better surface finishes. Let's keep it nice, let's make it last. I don't know about you guys, but I don't consider myself somebody that's lazy, but I've always found it frustrating dealing with projects that are outside of my wheelhouse. Kind of like this plumbing. What fittings do I buy? What's the right adapter? Well, how does it order? How does it lay out? So let's spoon feed this to you to give you guys the exact recipe and the exact bill of materials. So again, we modified and improved based on the Jay Pearson system. A huge shout out again though to Jay for the original idea. One of the things I wanted to add were some pressure gauges to help understand what was the PSI before and after the 20 micron filter. This should help us confirm that we're not choking out our coolant system and to make sure that we've got uh, enough filter life left or if we need to replace the filter. I also wanted this to look really nice and that meant we were going to have to move the gray canister filter over to the right. Obviously, I knew that was going to happen, folks. I was well prepared. I just wanted to do that for demonstrative purposes, just in case you thought you were going to open up a valve before you had fully drained something. One of the benefits of working in a machine shop is you can make stuff. So we quickly fabbed up this uh, nice plate. We powder coated it. Jared TIG welded a bracket on there. That's going to hold our existing Haas filter as well as the new 20 micron filter from McMaster. If you don't want to fab up a whole bracket, you could easily just drill a couple of holes in the Haas sheet metal. I kind of didn't want to do that, which is why we fabbed a bracket that used the existing holes and again made a L bracket that fit the new filter. The plastic top of these filters, I believe is a sort of a self-tapping type of plastic. We've used regular machine screws just fine. Uh, we've done the same thing on the fog busters for our Tormach machines. We wanted to reuse the existing blue hoses from Haas. I didn't want to cut them. Just grab a heat gun or your, even your wife's hair blow dryer, heat them up and the barb fittings will pull off pretty easily. We capped off the middle port on the left side. 
and then we're using a short piece of hose with two barbed fittings. You could make this a solid connection, but I like the idea of having a hose just to give some isolation between the two and allow for some misalignment in how they mount. Make sure you add Teflon tape. I prefer that here over pipe dope, although uh, the folks that are more in the know on this stuff, please feel free to chime in on the comments below. We haven't modified any of the existing Haas stuff, which I like. In other words, I could bring this exactly back to factory. To me, that's kind of, a, I like that idea. And we bought some of these pinch clamps from McMaster to crimp our hoses back onto the barbs. All right, we're all hooked up. Doing one more double check of all our fittings to make sure everything feels tight, secure, and in the right place. Turn her on, we've got flood coolant. So I had no idea what PSI we were gonna run. I really didn't. So I bought the zero to 100 gauges. We wrote down on a piece of note paper the date as well as what the PSI is. We were running about 28 into the filter and about 23 or 24 out of the filter. So how do you build your own? If you head over to the NYC CNC website, you can use the library and this smart search. So you could search for filter or you could even click Haas and these tags automatically update and say shop operation and you'll see Haas filter system. It won't say coming soon when this video is out. And we've got a link to the bill of materials and we walk through each part number, the quantity required, the McMaster description, as well as some, some overall or general comments. You can see the total comes to 133. You could absolutely save some money if you bought some of these things probably from a local store. I find though with all the pipe fittings, often it's easier just to get what works. The photo letters here correspond to this picture on the NYC CNC website where inspired again by Jay Pearson, we went ahead and labeled each individual item so that you can see what exactly is what including even the Haas hose dimensions with the appropriate clamps. Again, we've got those listed in the bill of materials here. And finally, this is why McMaster Car rocks and why they continue to earn our business. When we first got this photograph off Jay Pearson's Instagram, I thought, you know what? I don't really wanna type all of these numbers in. I wonder if, I tried to text it to them. You can text McMaster Car, but their text message account doesn't accept photographs. So I emailed it to them and I said, would you be willing to create an order based on the attached photograph? And within an hour, they wrote back, not saying yes or no, saying we already created the quote based on your image. By the way, we noticed there was a correction in one of the part numbers. We quoted the shorted length of tubing available and it was all right there, ready for me to click buy on it. Folks, if you've ever been through a business school type class on understanding human psychology around purchasing, the fewer the clicks, the fewer action items, the fewer decisions somebody has to make, the more likely they're going to go ahead and proceed with that purchase. McMaster Car is doing us a great service here and they're making it easy to do. We wrote back and said, you rock. Just awesome. So for folks that want to do this, you could probably send them this photograph in the Excel file. Uh, by putting it in the Excel file, we made it easier to populate a McMaster car order anyways. Folks, thanks for watching. Take care. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. See you soon.